Hello, kind people of YouTube. Today, we're going to talk about this mic. It is infamous AKG C1000. As you can see, previous owner already tried to mod it and he removed this grill on top of it. Uh, well, I guess it did something, but there are a couple things you can do to this mic to make it sound way, way, way better. The issue I have with this mic is the existence of a capacitor, which is usually marked as C2 capacitor on schematics. It is coupling capacitor that rolls off low end. It tapers it off slightly starting at 100 Hertz. So the only reason I can think of AKG using this capacitor is uh, to try to minimize proximity effect. As you know when you move your mic towards source it boosts bass. So by introducing this filter they probably try to minimize this effect. However what this does if you use this mic at distance like as overhead or you're recording your guitar or whatever uh, this is not necessary. You don't need any roll off and this is probably one single reason why people find this microphone sounding thin and shrill and whatnot. So if there's one thing you should do to this mic is increasing value of this capacitor. Uh, stock value is 68 nanofarads and you should increase it to say one microfarad. At least that's what I use. Next issue I have with it is this here. I really have no idea why AKG did this. Uh, when I open this hat, I'm not sure if you can see, but there are openings in the back of almost any, not almost, of any cardio capsule. These openings in the back are responsible for creating a pattern response. So by blocking these openings or manipulating them in any way, you're messing up polar response and you're also messing with frequency response. So when you measure this mic with this hat on and additionally with stock grill on, there's all kinds of peaks and dips and peaks and dips in the high end. This, these surroundings, this chamber here is messing with a high end response of this mic, which is another reason why it might sound the way it does, why people perceive it as sharp. Uh, what's happening, the, the sound sound waves are jumping back and forth. This thing is creating a chamber so their uh, sound is resonating and coming back into the capsule and coming out of the capsule. So uh, you should really uh, remove this cap. The good thing is you can use this mic just like this. Increase that C2 capacitor and use your mic this way. It will sound way better this way. And I will show you this later on a frequency response graph that I took. Uh, but since this guy already removed this grill, I'm just going to cut access material here. Uh, now, if you're using this uh, microphone for voice recording or voiceover or whatever, you actually need this. You need a grill in front of it because it has a sponge inside, it has foam inside, uh, which blocks different pops and B's and P's and stuff like that. Uh, but even better way is to use it without this and use just regular studio pop filter. So I just suggest if you don't absolutely need this here for aesthetic reasons or whatever, you should just remove it. So, I'm going to show you where to find this C2 capacitor, how to increase it, 
great thing is we don't really have to remove it. We are adding value to it. So we're just going to solder uh, additional cap on top of uh, existing one. So it's non-destructive. You can bring it to stock value anytime you want. If you don't like the results, I'm going to show you where it's found, how to replace it, how to disassemble this. And I'm going to show you the results, both frequency responses and how it sounds before and after the mod. So I hope you like it and please enjoy. Okay, so here we are. We'll just start with this assembly. You open it this way, we need a screw driver. Unfortunately, you need to unsolder these three these three connections here. There is three connections here. I really hope you can see that. There is unfortunately some unsoldering that has to be done. We have to remove these three wires going to the capsule, unfortunately. Maybe we could pull it off without doing that, but I'm not ready to risk it. So we need to unsolder these three. There goes one. It's smart to take pictures in order to know where things go before starting. There goes that one. There goes that one. And then all you need to do is actually need to these plastic parts are holding the PCB in place. So yeah, like this, and just pull it out. This on at least on this PCB, there are several versions of this PCB. So this is the capacitor that needs to be upgraded by adding larger value. Okay. You add. We're going. Where, where do I find this? Yeah, here it is. Let's see. I'm adding this guy here and there is just enough place for it to fit here so I'm just going to solder these two legs to existing two connections here it's one microfarad 63 volts capacitor it doesn't have to be 63 it shouldn't be lower than 63 volts, but and if it's too 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 large, it probably won't fit. Hopefully, you people can see this. So here it is, soldered to existing connections. And anytime if you want to undo this, you just remove this capacitor and that's it. Now we have full range, full bass response on this microphone. And now we have to reassemble it. So just put this guy back okay and we need to snap the PCB into place so you might feel that it's going to break but 
just the way it's designed. Yes. And it's back. Now we need to resolder these wires back. Now I should have done this in the first place in order for you people to see this properly, but it's not easy to do, do this micro surgery thing and deal with the camera at the same time, so. It's really tricky to do this on its own, but record a video at the same time is, uh, yeah. Not the cleanest job ever, but having in mind I had to record and do this, I'm pretty satisfied. Experts that might be looking at this, this is not high impedance part of the circuit because the fat, fat board is actually under the capsule. So we're not dealing with super sensitive high impedance part of the circuit so these this paste or uh, residue shouldn't make any trouble but you know yeah I might do resoldering of this part one more time but for the for the purpose of this video I think it's Great. Yeah, let's reassemble this sucker. You just slide it back into place. It should go smoothly. And it's done. So even though this cap also has openings, they are not really aligned with the, the ones. And even if they were, there's still a lot of mess, distortions and stuff. So you don't really need this cap. Let's remove it. Okay, so here I've removed this access material. My weapon of choice was angle grinder. I'm sure there are several ways you can do it, but this was probably the easiest one. Here's the stock one. Nothing standing in the way of the capsule now. I'm quite sure this is not the best looking microphone ever, but it's certainly a lot better sounding one. So, and one thing you can experiment with is maybe make some kind of uh, custom mesh on top of this. That wouldn't make any kind of trouble as long as it's coarse enough not to cause any internal reflections. Okay, let's go and hear how this sounds compared to this stock one. Now, I have microphone in front of my speaker and I'm going to measure frequency response of this one, which is modded. So let's start. Let's measure the stock one. Okay, and here we have the results. The red one is modded one. As you can see, it has way better low end response compared to the stock one, which is green one here. And those dips and valleys I was talking about, you can see them here. Let me remove this. The green one is stock. So you see those cancellations and peaks right here. Don't pay attention to this dip here because it has 
to do with acoustics of my room and it's at 40 hertz so this is by no means ideal but it's present on both though. so this is just cancellation occurring in my room uh, on the red one you can see here it's way 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 smoother and slight roll off and at high end these slight bumps and things come mostly from my listening environment so this has nothing to do with the microphone but this one here is pure difference between these two mics so by removing those surroundings around the capsule you get rid of this and you get way smoother almost flat sounding microphone now let's hear how they actually compare let's hear two examples okay and now we're back uh we have this drum loop here which was played through the speaker and recorded into stock microphone and modded one and now you're actually going to hear the difference and you're going to see in the video when I switch back and forth between stock and modded one. Now I can really, really honestly say that modded one sounds way, way, way better. Pay attention to the low end. And I don't know if you can hear that shrillness and that sharpness in the high end everybody's talking about in the stock one. Hear it, hear it, I'm going to loop just this section. This is going to be painful, but quite, quite revealing. Just pay attention to the symbol and the decay of the symbol. You hear that? <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe, but I'm sure you hear it. You hear that piercing. that comes just from the reflections around the capsule nothing else now let's hear the bass drum you hear you hear how hi-hat is much more precise on the modded one and how fuller bass is So, there you go. I hope you liked it and please enjoy your modding.